Hello, my name is Jean Bider with Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper, which serves as the chair of the Niagara Relicensing Environmental Coalition. Thanks for joining me today. In this presentation, I'll share information about the Niagara River Greenway, the role of the Niagara Relicensing Environmental Coalition, and several funding opportunities that are available to nonprofit organizations, local municipalities, state agencies, public benefit corporations, public authorities, non-governmental organizations, and members of the public with an interest in projects that will advance the vision of the Niagara River Greenway. Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper is the chair of the Niagara Relicensing Coalition, commonly referred to as NRAC. Through this role as chair, we are pleased to share the information provided in this presentation. There are many partnerships that have formed through the Niagara Relicensing efforts, and many of these partnerships will be highlighted throughout the presentation. Let's first talk about the Niagara River Greenway. Before I begin the presentation, I would like to recognize and respect the Haudenosaunee Confederacy as the traditional stewards of this land and acknowledge their sovereignty, land rights, and relationships with this land since time immemorial. I acknowledge them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. I am grateful to be here. The Niagara River Greenway aspires to be a world-class corridor of places, parks, and landscapes that celebrates and interprets our unique natural, cultural, recreational, scenic, and heritage resources, and provides access to and connections between these important resources while giving rise to economic opportunities for the region. It began with the approval of the Niagara River Greenway Plan on May 17, 2007, marking the beginning of a new era for the Niagara River and surrounding communities. The plan defines the vision that guides our Niagara River, an internationally renowned water resource, and the principles, goals, and criteria that serve to define this vision. The Niagara River Greenway Commission is responsible for the implementation of this plan and works towards its achievement by carrying out its duties and responsibilities as defined in Chapter 460 of the Laws of New York 2004. The guiding blueprint is the Niagara River Greenway Plan, which developed as a grassroots effort in cooperation with state agencies, municipal governments, stakeholder groups, and the general public. The Niagara River Greenway Plan can be viewed at Niagara River Greenway. Dot com. As mentioned, the Niagara Greenway is a world-class corridor of places, parks, and landscapes that celebrates and interprets our unique natural, cultural, and recreational resources. It provides access to and connections between these important resources while giving rise to economic opportunities for the region. Its features and highlights include a 36-mile-long corridor that extends the length of the Niagara River in the counties of Niagara and Erie, which encompasses an area of 237 square miles, over 100 miles of shoreline, as well as two major cities and multiple towns and villages. It features the world-renowned Niagara Falls, plus the Niagara Gorge, the Niagara and Buffalo Rivers, forests, wetlands, and an array of wildlife which have been recognized with a globally significant important bird area designation, the Ramsar designation for international significant wetlands, and the Theses River Prize. It houses a wealth of museums, architectural treasures, industrial heritage sites, forts, and battlefields, and encompasses the western terminus of the Erie Canal, a presidential inaugural site, and numerous underground railroad venues. Greenway resources include passive and active recreation, as well as cultural, educational, and historical sites. The Greenway's parklands, nature preserves, and trail networks provide easy access to the natural environment and abundant waterfront recreational opportunities. The Niagara River Greenway Commission is responsible for the implementation of the Greenway Plan. The commission is made up of 14 members. Six serve in an ex officio role and are state agency staff members. Eight members are appointed through the Governor, State Assembly, and State Senate. The Greenway Commission has three staff members with Greg Stevens as Executive Director. 
The administrative offices for the Greenway Commission are located at Beaver Island State Park. Proposals brought before the Niagara River Greenway Commission include projects for funding under the various settlement agreements through the four standing committees that were established during the relicensing of the New York Power Authority's Niagara Power Project. In addition, other projects not seeking relicensing Greenway funds may be brought before the Commission when the sponsor is seeking review and endorsement in conjunction with their application for various grants or approvals other than Greenway funds. Also, a separate funding source is available through the Ecological Standing Committee, or ESC. The ESC exists through a different organizing structure, which will be discussed later in the presentation. The Niagara River Greenway Commission is responsible for stewardship of the Niagara River Greenway Plan that defines the future of the Niagara River Corridor. In this regard, the Commission will review projects in terms of its operative principles, goals, and criteria. Project proponents are expected to provide sufficient documentation so that members of the Commission will be able to determine if a specific project is consistent with the Niagara River Greenway Plan. It is not the intent of the Commission to duplicate the technical review procedures that may be employed by other government agencies with regulatory or advisory authority over projects within the Niagara River Greenway. However, the Commission reserves the right to assess any project element and specification that will have an impact on the Niagara River Greenway vision. Greenway proposals being submitted for consistency determination and consultation must meet the Niagara River Greenway vision and mission with its corresponding principles, goals, and criteria as outlined here. Specifics for each of the principles, goals, and criteria are detailed in the Niagara River Greenway Plan, which is available online. In tandem with the Niagara River Greenway Plan development, 30 nonprofit environmental groups called the Niagara Relicensing Environmental Coalition, or NRAC, came together to evaluate and negotiate mitigation for the impacts of the operation of the Niagara Power Project on the local ecosystem. In 2005, 19 organizations formally endorsed the settlement agreement that required both specific habitat improvement project work by the New York Power Authority, as well as the creation of several ongoing funding pools for ecological and greenway projects in excess of $500 million over 50 years. NRAC has a direct vote in the expenditure of $100 million in Niagara River watershed ecological funding over 50 years. Today, NRAC is comprised of eight active independent member organizations and is chaired by Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. The other seven organizations are the Adirondack Mountain Club Niagara Frontier, Buffalo Audubon Society, League of Women Voters, Niagara Muskie Association, Sierra Club, Western New York Land Conservancy, and Western New York Presbytery. The mission of NRAC is to monitor the timely and beneficial use within the Niagara River ecological system of all the resources which were negotiated as part of the Niagara Power Project Relicensing Settlement Agreement and to be a coalition of environmental organizations whose group efforts smoothly ensure the ecological protection and restoration of the Niagara River within the concept of the Niagara River Greenway. There are two funding opportunities that NRAC serves as a cooperative member for the funding committee. The first funding opportunity is through the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee, which administers the Greenway Ecological Fund. There are two application cycles per year. Each year, a million dollars are added to the fund. Through 2022, over $10 million has been awarded. NRAC contributes to consensus-based decision-making on the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee. 
The Greenway Ecological Standing Committee is one of four independent standing committees which oversees the distribution of the Niagara River Greenway funding. A proposal is first submitted to the Greenway Commission for consistency with the Greenway Plan. If consistency is granted, the proposal is then submitted to the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee for funding approval. In addition to NRAC, which serves as co-chair for GESC, there are five additional entities that are part of the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee, which includes New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, who is the co-chair of the GESC, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, Tuscarora Nation, Tonawanda Seneca Nation, and the New York Power Authority. These six entities make consensus-based funding decisions for the Greenway Ecological Fund. NRAC, with its eight member organizations, has one representative on the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee. The second funding opportunity where NRAC serves as a cooperating member is through the Ecological Standing Committee, which administers the Fish and Wildlife Habitat Enhancement Restoration Fund. There is one application cycle per year with a pre-proposal due March 15th and, if invited, a full proposal due July 15th. HERF was initially funded with $16.2 million. HERF funding supports projects that address impacts from water level fluctuations or other effects that are caused in part by the Niagara Power Project operations. NRAC contributes to consensus-based decision-making on the Ecological Standing Committee. The proposal is submitted to the Ecological Standing Committee for funding approval. Applicants are encouraged to share the proposal with the Greenway Commission, but it is not required. In addition to NRAC, there are six additional entities that are part of the Ecological Standing Committee, which includes New York State Department of State, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, Tuscarora Nation, Tonawana Seneca Nation, and New York Power Authority, who is the chair of the Ecological Standing Committee. These seven voting entities make consensus-based funding decisions for the Habitat Environment Restoration Fund. NRAC, with its eight member organizations, has one representative on the Ecological Standing Committee. Her funded projects address impacts from water level fluctuations or other effects that are caused, in part, by the Niagara Power Project operations. We would like to encourage qualified applicants to apply to these funds. To further help applicants understand the process, I'm going to go through several types of projects and programs that the committees have funded over time. The Greenway Ecological Standing Committee provides funding to support ecologically beneficial projects within the Niagara River Greenway Corridor. The majority of the proposals funded are focused on restoration and living shorelines, as well as stewardship and land protection. Since 2009, the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee has supported the development of restoration and living shorelines projects. This work was established in response to degraded shoreline conditions in the Niagara River Greenway Corridor. The shoreline conditions in the Niagara River Greenway have been drastically altered from their natural state. A total of 24% of the Niagara River has a hardened shoreline. When shorelines exist in their natural state, they provide several associated benefits ranging from improved community resiliency, improved water quality, and reduced maintenance. Living shorelines provide important fish and wildlife habitat and improved access for us as well. The goal of restoration and living shorelines projects are to restore degraded shoreline areas to a more natural state. These photos show the key features of a living shoreline, a gradual transition from land to water. Each habitat type within that transition performs important functions. Roots hold in soils, woodland trees shade water and provide canopy habitat for birds, wetlands reduce flooding and filter pollutants from entering the water, which improves water quality and provides important nursery habitat for fish. 
a Living Shorelines project was implemented at Hyde Park in Niagara Falls. There were observed algae blooms in the park. Working with existing topography, the project was able to fit in a variety of habitat types. A stormwater pipe was cut back and a cattail marsh was created. In another central area of the project, it was a vast mowed lawn with uplands separated from the water. Through design and implementation, the connected land and water were restored. Healthy native vegetation was established and public access was incorporated. Another Living Shorelines project was implemented at Ellicott Creek Park in Tonawanda. The design features built off existing site features, addressing areas of degradation and enhancing what was already there. Specifically, the site was enhanced to promote turtle nesting, which was previously observed in areas adjacent and not ideal to the shoreline. Through the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee, there is also support for stewardship and invasive species management. An example of an invasive species project that received Greenway Ecological Funds is the Invasive Plant Removal and Native Plant Conservation at Niagara University. This project involved removal of invasive species in an area of old growth forest on Niagara University's campus to conserve a unique ecosystem that expands outward from the Niagara River corridor. Through a strong educational restoration partnership at Tiff Nature Preserve, three vernal pools were enhanced. This project included upland habitat enhancement and wetland depression enhancement to extend the hydro period of three vernal pools within a six acre project area in order to benefit the blue spotted salamander and other vernal pool species. And finally, to fortify the gorge and restore its health, the Western New York Land Conservancy, through its Restore the Gorge program, is removing invasive plant species and replacing them with native trees, shrubs, grasses, and wildflowers. Funding from the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee is allowing the Land Conservancy to improve the health of wetland seeps at the base of the gorge walls. These are some of the most diverse features in the gorge. And finally, through the Greenway Ecological Standing Committee, there is also support for land protection projects. Land protection is a priority funding item through the Greenway Ecological Fund and is instrumental in creating the Greenway. One example is the Western New York Land Conservancy Greenway Land Protection Program. This project is implementing a new program to proactively protect ecologically valuable land on Grand Island, the Niagara River Gorge, and the Niagara Escarpment to serve as a catalyst that will lead to hundreds of newly protected acres throughout the Niagara River Greenway. Examples of these publicly accessible nature preserves include Marjorie Gallagly Nature Sanctuary on Grand Island and Stella Niagara Preserve. These newly protected lands will help promote tourism, enhance the environment, and advance the economic revitalization of riverfront communities. The Fish and Wildlife Habitat Enhancement Restoration Fund supports projects that address impacts from water level fluctuations or other effects that are caused in part by the New York Power Authority's Niagara Power Project operations. The Niagara Power Project is New York State's biggest electricity producer, providing up to 2.6 million kilowatts of clean electricity. The generation of this clean energy has impacts on the surrounding environment. Through the Ecological Standing Committee's funding source, the Habitat Environment Restoration Fund, large-scale projects have been implemented to mitigate the impacts of the clean energy power generation. Examples include the Niagara River Fish Attraction Structures Project, which was a partnership between the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and the Niagara Muskie Association. This project constructed fish attraction structures in the Niagara River, which entailed placement of rock and woody debris to break upriver currents and provide shelter for adult fish and areas for young fish to escape predation. A second example is the construction of Turn Island with the Buffalo Audubon Society. 
This project involved the construction of a new turn nesting island in the Niagara River to provide nesting habitat that is ideal for common terns. The primary feature of the island was significant expansion of gravel-covered terrain and vegetation that provides appropriate shelter for nesting pairs and their chicks. To learn more about the funding opportunities available through the Niagara River Greenway Standing Committees, please check out nypa.gov backslash power backslash generation backslash niagara-power-project backslash niagara-relicensing. To learn more about the Niagara Relicensing Environmental Coalition and projects, please check out greenway-nrac.org. For further questions regarding GESC or ESC proposal requirements, contact Erin Redding, Niagara River Habitat Specialist, Natural Heritage Trust for New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, Greenway Ecological Standing Committee Co-Chair. Her phone number is 716 851 7010. And thank you.